Okay, so I'm going to read you an email. Now, first, I want to say this, okay? That way people online don't misunderstand. Is that uh, I hate explaining myself all the time, but we get more and more people. So because we're getting more and more new people, I don't want them to misunderstand. So I don't criticize and use sarcasm uh, on people when they're searching for truth when they have questions. That's right. All right? Amen. Or even sometimes they might have respectful disagreements. But when I get sarcastic and criticizing is that if, it, if that person has a wide influence that definitely affects and damages the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. When that person is actually a secret prideful person himself and he cloaks it, he cloaks it and pretends to be kind. Now, that don't work with me because I go through hundreds, thousands of comments probably by now on YouTube. Not only that, I witnessed to hundreds to thousands of people. Not only that, I dealt with people in church, okay? And I dealt with pious people in church too. Not only that, I'm a pastor. I learned to be kind and nice to people too. So I know when a person is playing politics, okay? That don't fool me, okay? So... I'm going to uh, bash against these people. These people who follow Judas White, James Big Fat White Lie, and John Anklebaum, and Dan Walnuts, and these people who criticize the King James Bible, you know one thing, you know why I criticize those guys? Because they have an arrogant spirit. When a person loves the King James Bible, what they would do is that they would act like they know more than that person, and they would belittle that person. And it's so funny, with that condescending, condemnatory attitude, they hypocritically accuse you for, being a, for having a condemnatory attitude. See, that is hypo hip hypocritical, lying, arrogant, prideful Pharisee. And I truly dislike that. Amen. With, people who, with people, there are people out there who might say, well, you know, I don't, you know, this, I think all Bibles are the same and stuff like that. Hey, you know, I totally understand those people and then I would try to explain with scripture and sometimes they don't see it because they're too blind but I know certain people who deliberately attack the King James Bible and they will use this uh, atmosphere of Greek and Hebrew and they will put you down and then they belittle King James Bible believers those people I'm really against all right so enough of explaining myself here so I'm going to explain through this email Dear Pastor Kim, I am a born-again Christian. Oh, I know what that is because they don't want, they want to try to put me into the burden that Christians, you Christians are attacking your saved brothers in Christ. So he starts off with that, I'm a born-again Christian. But, oh, you're just being judgmental, Pastor. Well, okay, let's just keep reading. I'm a born-again Christian that lives in New Zealand. I came across you on YouTube. And he puts you in capitalization here. Okay. Why? You, like that, claim the KJV is, and it puts only capitalization, true Bible. Can you please tell me which KJV Bible are proclaiming? When the KJV was produced in the 1600s, there was an Oxford and a Cambridge. Also, there has been 1611, 1625, and many other editions. So which one do you back? Second, before the KJV, which Bible were people getting saved with? Okay, so in this email, did I condemn the person and get all judgmental? No, I just, I just emailed him back two links. That's it. I sent him two video links to answer his question. Now, I get this other email back after that. He says right here, Hi, I watched your two videos. Mate, is that all you have? You first stated that the Bible was not put together until 1600. Of course, Adam and Eve did not have the Bible, but what about after Jesus went back to heaven? You stated no one had the Bible before the KJV. What do you do with these Bibles? And then he lists uh, the Hebrew Bible version, John Wycliffe at 1380, the Tyndale Bible, 1523, the Geneva Bible, William Knox at 1560. These men of God led hundreds of people to the Lord. Second, you use verses out of context and give no support to your argument. Luke 13, 32. The Greek word is teleo. Look at the definition. Jesus did not become perfect. He already was. You making statements that go against the Bible. 
third and most conflicting point is you stated the KJV Bible is perfect. Did you not? However, in your two videos, you stated the conflicting statements. First, you stated the original 16 Bible version. If someone read it, they would be able to read it because the spelling of the words. Second, you stated most of the problems people bring against the KJV are spelling errors. If KJV Bible is so perfect, then why don't keep to the origin version, the one with real King James English? If KJV Bible is so perfect, then why can spelling mistakes still be found? Don't you think God is capable to protect his word? In relation, the KJV translation does not just have spelling mistakes, but translation errors. So he gives a few right here. Oh, so now he's going Greek and Hebrew here. I knew it. I knew from that language that sounded like Judas White, Dan Walnuts, and John Anklebaum. Look, when I condemn these people, I'm not saying it without thinking first, okay? I watched so many of the videos. Let me ask a question. Where did you learn those KJV criticizing arguments from? Uh -huh. If not those three guys Man, or weird. people who are influenced by those three guys. Yeah. See, that's why I pound those guys. Other people who don't know all those arguments against the, to criticize KJV, they're just ignorant and they're like saying, well, I think all Bibles are the same. I put them at a different level. Okay, so anyway, he says right here, and they called Barnabas Jupiter and Paul Mercurius because he was the chief speaker, Acts 14, verse 12. Mistranslation of Zeus and Hermes as Jupiter and Mercurius is dynamic equivalence in all of its glory. This misleading transliteration can be traced through all of the English Bible to Jerome's Latin Vulgate, which used the Roman names of the Greek gods. The Wycliffe translation... La, 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 let's skip all that, okay? So that way I can finish this video quickly. I'm just going to give the main gist of his arguments here. His strong points, his main gist. That way I can fairly argue back, okay? I'm going to fairly argue back. He also mentions right here Psalm 65, 1 through 2. Praise waiteth for thee, O God, in Sion, which is S, not Z. So right here we see Sion with an S in the KJV. But he claims it should be with the Z. Why? The reason why is because the 1611 KJV mistranslated the Hebrew word for Sion. Sion, T-S-I-Y-O-W-N. As Sion, S-I-O-N. In many Psalms, and he lists all these Psalms verses. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, here's the important part. S Sion, with the S, in Psalm 65, 1, is not a spelling error, but a translation error. Because the Hebrew word for Sion is Sion, S-I-Y-O-N, a different word than T-S-I-Y-O-W-N, which is translated Zion. The words Sion and uh, Sion identify two different locations in Israel. Mount Zion in Jerusalem and Mount Hermon, also called Mount uh, Sion in northern Israel. Deuteronomy 448 states Mount Sion that is Hermon. Okay, so why is this an error? Because of Deuteronomy 4, 48. It shows a different mountain called Sion where Moses died. So this Sion at the book of Psalms is obviously a mistranslation because we're claiming it's the same mountain that Moses died. No, it should be the one here, Zion. So that's what he's arguing, okay? And then uh, we also covered the argument, another mistranslation, so another mistranslation, as we covered right here, KJV says Jupiter and Mercurius. But, no, that's an error. Why? Because it should be Zeus in Greek, because that's what the Greek word is right here is Hermos. Where in the world did they just scratch off Mercurius and Jupiter? Those are Roman renditions, not Greek renditions, he claims. Okay, let's keep reading right here. And then he mentions 1 John 5, 7 as another argument. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost testify as one. You won't find any manuscript with this line in it until 1500 in the Vulgate manuscript. These are just three of many more. In short, you are passing judgment on others. Question, do you believe in the following? The Trinity, Jesus was God in the flesh, and then he mentions the fundamental of faith. If you believe in these statements, then why do other version people end up at the same point as you? I believe in these statements. I think you need to stop judging people who don't use the KJV Bible. Remember, if you judge people, you too will be judged by the same standard. It seems that you love more the Word of God than God of the Word. Have a listen to two of the videos I have sent to you. That was cute.
<laughs> All right. Now, I debunked every point and line in this argument right here, okay? So first of all, he mentioned about, uh, you first stated the Bible was not put together until 1600. Of course, Adam and Eve did not have the Bible, but what about after Jesus went back to heaven? So uh, I emailed back right here. So I broke it down. I wrote back this way. Mate, is that all you have? Answering your argument one. After Jesus went back to heaven, all scholars agree, and I mean all scholars, okay, all of them, agree the Bible faced corruptions. What's so hard to believe God didn't clear all the corruptions until 1611? If I picked 300, 1100, 1610, or 1815, you would react the same way. If you are open-minded to the video, which I already sent in the link, I'll put it underneath in this video too, okay? The video links I sent, so you can send. I sent him the link. If you are open-minded to the video rather than already biased, the point is, there can be a long length of time for God to complete his perfection process. Do you believe that? Yes or no? The Bible says he must have a perfect word of God. Yeah. So which is the best candidate for that? These two videos will debunk your answer to those two questions that I asked. So I put those two video links to him at a separate email. So I'll put all those video links there too for you to figure it out. Answering your argument number two. So remember he mentioned all these different Bible versions, Hebrew, John Wycliffe, and then he said these men led hundreds of people to salvation. So how I argued back, answering your argument number two, of course those men led people to the Lord. If you paid attention to the video, which I already sent a long time ago, okay? God was using these men during his process of perfection. If you read your Bible much, I'm sure you'll agree the Lord has always used men throughout the Bible, even Christians today, for a particular plan of his perfection process. He can use many men throughout time to complete the process. All right, now remember his other argument that uh, I mistra- that I, this one is the worst argument I ever heard from him, okay? So I already put one and two, so I'll just put a star right here, okay? So Luke 13, 32, which I mentioned in my video about the perfection process. So he, says, so he says right here that Jesus did not become perfect, like through a perfection process. He was already perfect because I mistranslated the Greek word because in that Greek word, it should show a past tense. He already was, okay? Now, <laughs> that one was the worst thing out of the entire email, because look at Luke 13.32. Luke 13.32, okay? Now, this is how I argued back, okay? So I will read it, that way I can explain to him. Uh, answering your argument number three, which was that passage. You don't know Greek and e even English, dear sir. What's <laughs> sad is that I see you're like other James White clones and Greek amateurs of cherry-picking definition in Greek words. Yep. Now, before you people say, oh, Pastor Kim, you shouldn't be so condemning, why are you condemning me already? I'm, I'm not saying stuff without thinking. That guy, when he sent me that email, he sent me James White video links, okay? I told you, these guys learn from these men. Yep. I'm not just harping out, bashing everybody out there. I'm bashing the particular people who have that arrogant, prideful spirit. Amen. Luke 13.32 is past tense, all right? Because the perfection process is completed and accomplished, that's Greek, even in Strong's, okay? When? In the third day. That's English. Look at that verse, 13.32. Because I was arguing in the other video, Jesus went through a perfection process. And remember, the guy was saying, no, he wasn't going through a perfection process. He was already perfected. Okay, he's right, he's already perfected, past tense Greek, when in English. Uh, and he said unto them, go ye, and tell that fox, behold, I cast out devils, and I do cures today and tomorrow. And when, and this is English, the third day I shall be what? Perfected. perfected. Okay, yes, it's past tense, perfected. When? At the, the third day, <laughs> <In> future. <laughs> okay. I even sent him a link, a lexicon link, just in case, all right? Just in case he's critical. 
You can even find that online. I didn't even look at my book. I just found it online, okay? If you're referring to Jesus is already perfect as God, then of course that's true, I would admit, okay? But the context of perfection here is completing and accomplishing, which is defined at that lexicon link that I showed, his mission of death, burial, and resurrection. Amen. Okay, now his other argument, right? Okay, Greek and Hebrew, right? Now, I want to be honest with you. Even a dummy can do this, okay? Now, why, are you, why am I belittling these people? They belittle us. And I want to show them that their so-called higher education yeah. and intelligence of Greek and Hebrew Amen. is actually amateur playground children's Amen. level. You again, okay, answering your argument number four, which is uh, these three, right? Okay. You again showed your amateur cherry picking of Greek and Hebrew words. But this becomes even more embarrassing if you use even the most simplest internet tools called Google and Wikipedia. Type Jupiter in Google Translate and it'll translate to the Greek word Zeus. Type Mercury in Google Translate and it'll translate to the Greek word Hermes. Excuse me, I put Hermas right here, Hermes. Type Zion in Wikipedia with the Z, Zion, okay? And it'll explain the Hebrew transliteration is Sion, Sion. Quote, Zion, Z, Hebrew, Sion, modern, Sion, which is S-I-Y-O-N, and even the modern T-S-I-Y-Y-O-N, because he was trying to make a distinction with those. Also transliterated, Sion, S-I-O-N, Sion, S-A-Y-O-N, Sion, S-Y-O-N, Sion, T-Z-I-O-N, Sion, T-S-I-O-N, is a place name often used as a synonym for Jerusalem as well as for the biblical land of Israel as a whole, end of quote. And then I told them this, remember we're reading an English Bible, not Hebrew. The English etymology, and I even pulled it up online, Merriam-Webster's Dictionary even. This is amateur Greek, amateur Hebrew, amateur English shows it's, quote, Middle English Sion, for Zion, Z-I-O-N. From Old English, citadel in Palestine, which was the nucleus of Jerusalem. From Late Latin, from Greek, Sion, from Hebrew, from Hebrew S-I-Y-O-N. For Zion, Z-I-O-N. It's not, and then I can, end of quote. I continue here. It's not hard to believe there can be multiple locations with Sion. Because remember, he said there's one right here, Deuteronomy 448, and then we're saying, oh no, this is a Sion, but that's not the same place. I argued this. It's not hard to believe there can be multiple locations with S-I-O-N. Why is that so hard to believe when it's common for even today for different places to have similar names? And I even gave him the HuffingtonPost.com link article of all these different places that have the same names, yet they're in totally different places. See, this is just amateur common sense stuff. Do you see why I belittle those higher, so-called higher intellect guys? Because it's not truly higher education. It's really amateur, dummy stuff. You could figure it out. And I even told him this. Even God has a Zion in heaven and a Zion on earth. Yeah. See, even in the Bible, okay? Remember, you have to prove the English translation of the word is plainly incorrect. Now, is this plainly incorrect in English? English, English here. When we look at English dictionaries, English etymologies, and when we type the English word and we see a Greek rendition and a Hebrew rendition of it, okay? You got to remember this. You're reading oh, English, okay? Amen. Reading English, okay? I don't want to explain myself to online people again while I'm doing this di critical demeanor. I already explained at the beginning, okay? And uh, I don't have to post videos again. Just read Nehemiah 13 and Matthew 23, what Jesus did, okay? Amen. That's right. why, am I doing th why am I doing this? Because that person did the same yeah. thing. That's the method that... By their fruits, ye shall know them. That's the fruits of Judas White, Dan Walnuts, and John Anklebaum. Those guys. They use that kind of demeanor. Arrogance, prideful, belittling. Using common, 
uh, acu accusation language that they're belittled, they're amateurs, they're dumb, they don't know much. Why don't I do the same in return? Yeah. Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceit. Bring it to naught. All right, I can't keep justifying myself here, okay? I got to address all the arguments, Stay okay? On. All right, anyway, um, it's not incorrect what they translated into English. They weren't giving you a Hebrew and Greek Bible here. You can pick and choose Zion or Sion with the S and have differences, but it doesn't change the fact that the S, Sion, is still fine in English. Now, answering his argument number five, he said 1 John 5, 7. <laughs> this is funny. This is plainly James White argument, okay? Yeah. You, you got to retract that, okay? Because Brutes Metzger, he kind of retracted that concerning Erasmus. He actually even apologized in his book. So you got to retract this. I hope that's not what you're saying in this email concerning about Erasmus. Okay, but if you are, you should change your mind. Because even the famous Brutes Metzger retracted, actually. Okay, anyway. So he claims that, uh, now I covered this on a video, 1 John 5, 7. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, these three are run. And he claims there's no manuscript with this line until 1500 in the Vulgate manuscript. And then you know how I responded. I just sent him a video link. Answering your argument number five. I already discussed 1 John 5, 7 in these two videos. But guess what? Now I'm trying to help him out more in his argument. But guess what? That's not the only one. To support your side here, there are several more verses out there you can use as a supposedly small amount of Greek manuscript evidence. The answer is easily explained here. And then I gave him the two video links. And I'll post those links underneath too. What I'll do is I'll put the video links in the points right here. That way you don't get lost. In answering argument number one, answering argument number two, three, four. That way you guys can see which video matches which. Amen. Okay, anyway, right here. Answering your argument number six. Now, his argument number six was sending me these two video links from by blessed our blessed brother in Christ who will be butt naked at the judgment seat if he <laughs> saved James White. Answering your argument number six, I, here's, I only wrote two sentences. I already watched those videos. Look, I wouldn't criticize James White so much. And these people, I mean, you people online are going, why are you criticizing James White so much, White so much? Because I already watched his videos, so I'm being fair when I critique these arguments because they're from James White stuff, see? And Dan Walnut stuff and John Anklebaum stuff, see? Look, I wouldn't criticize James White so much if I didn't already watch how he argued against the KJV. Uh -huh. By the way, our blessed brother in Christ, he's the one who song leads and plays a keyboard for us. Brother Jack Helu, he was watching James White stuff. He was learning stuff from him. But look, look at, look at him. He ended up in our church. Am I like, what's, what's this kind of stuff right here? Am I being mean, critical, and trying to offend people and drive them away? No, actually. No. Brother Jack, he'll ask me all these questions. What do I do? Do I belittle him? No. If he came with the James White demeanor, yeah. yeah. But if you come respectful and humble, I do the same in return. That's what I did in this email, right? He supposedly did a respectful email, but I knew the way he capitalized certain words and yeah. the certain question. That's yeah. exactly from a James White clone. And then I just respectfully responded. Then you saw his other email, right? Where he said, mate, is that all you have? And then he started to use this condemnatory language where, you know, you seem to say this, you're condemning, you're accusatory. Well, I'm doing the same thing in return. You're doing it. Okay. Answering your argument number seven. And we're done, okay? So remember his argument number seven was he mentioned all these fundamentals, right? Uh question, do you believe in the following? And he mentioned these beliefs. And then he was saying, if you believe in this, why do other version people end up the same point as you? I believe in these statements. You need to stop judging those people. That's what he says, right? So here's my answer to that one. Okay, so we believe in the fundamentals. But the problem is the fundamentals are attacked if we accept different Bibles. Now, why? It's because we keep interpreting our own Greek and Hebrew to justify contradictory translated verses that cover fundamental doctrines. 
Now, you know what the proof is? Now, I know what you guys are going to say online. That's why I'm being critical here, because you guys are being critical of me. And if you think we're just being a conspiracy theorist, that's what they accuse us of, right? Yeah. Oh, you're picking and choosing which is a major doctrine that the version supposedly uh, made a, a heretical statement. That's their mindset. I know those guys. So this is how I argue back. I'm guessing, and if you think we're just being a conspiracy theorist, I'm guessing you didn't really pay attention to James White's videos and how he argues Greek and Hebrew. Oh, no, 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 he didn't. No, you don't. If you watch his debates, do you notice when he's quoting verses, he jumps to different translations? He'll mention what the real Greek word and the real Hebrew word is to defend his Christian faith? See that? You can interpret a verse to change a fundamental doctrine yeah. to what you want to believe in. Now, that's just common sense. And I know you guys... Don't be dummies. I know you're smart, okay? Otherwise, you wouldn't pull up this stuff. Or maybe you're just such dumb amateurs, you just borrow like a clone what he argued and just parody. Look, if you had at least a little bit of common sense and smartness of using Greek and Hebrew, you would at least understand a bit of James White methods. And you do know that's bias. That's not fair. That's not being objective. But let me continue here. He's definitely cherry-picking with his own bias, and that can change important doctrines. No? And then I give a video link as proof, and you guys know what that video link is, and I'll post it right here, too. James White honors Satan as God. Well, look at the result of such method. By their fruits ye shall know them. Godspeed, Gene Kim. That's what I did. Amen. So it changes, it changes, it changes, okay? I don't care what you said, it changes yeah. something very fundamental. Final. If you call, if you call the devil God Almighty, if you call the devil Jesus, I think that's a major problem, Amen. okay? Right. So anyway, before you shoot off your mouth, because you already have already a preconceived bias, and that is your nature to be uh, throw out accusations and you you accuse me of being rash and throwing out accusations, right? No, you guys are gonna do it. You guys are gonna be rash and throw out accusations. Oh, he made an incredible statement like that, confusing uh, Satan as Jesus Christ. He's talking about Isaiah 14, 12. No, I'm not talking about that, okay? I'm gonna post the video links down there yeah. and look, you're gonna watch them, okay? But no, if you're gonna be rash and throw out accusations, then you're gonna just accuse me and critique. So I'm telling you, these people are rash. They don't look at the videos and study the arguments like I did fairly with that person. And the proof is actually this. The proof is he emails back. It's a shame KJV people like to pass judgment on non-KJV people so easily. What are you talking about? I covered all your arguments. Now guess what? He doesn't cover any Greek or Hebrew arguments here. Do you know why? He thought he could mess with me with Hebrew and Greek from what he borrowed. Yeah. See? So you know what he does? In, you know what it is? Completely ad hominem argument of just condemning us for being judgmental. Wait a minute. Isn't James White and those critics always done that? That's why isn't it fair that I do the same thing to them in return? If you actually listen to Dr. James White, he does not condemn KJV using people. I didn't say, okay, I know that. He allows people using the King James Bible. He condemns people who only use the King James. He criticizes those people. Yeah, he belittles right. them. My goodness, see that clever wording? KJV using. My word. He points out when defending the faith against Muslims, they attack the Christian faith using the KJV a lot. <laughs> oh, ain't that interesting. Dr. James White was a KJV at one time, if you don't know. Oh, really? As for me, you don't know my background, mate. I'm an evangelist and have studied the Bible like the Greek. Have you? Well, did you answer back in Greek then? <laughs> if you really studied in Greek? By the way, they attack the Christian faith using the KJV a lot. Don't they attack this guy? He's cherry picking again. Don't Muslims attack by using modern versions too a lot? He would point out that the modern Bibles neglected this. They contradicted each other in this. 
Look at this guy. This see, the most dangerous people I disrespect even more is not only people who just throw out rash accusations, but they throw out rash accusations in like a belittling manner and a so-called false humility manner, professional manner. I dislike that kind of attitude. That is playing sneaky. See that, these people? See, you know, now you understand why I criticize these people? Yeah. Now you know why I'm reading these emails? And this is just one, I didn't read all the emails. I'm just giving you one case right here. In short, I agree with you, look at the fruits of the people. You are dead right. Okay, then did you watch the video link after I wrote that? I put a video link by their fruits, he shall know them, and the video link. Did he watch that? No, he didn't. He would have saw James White honor Satan as God right there. See, these people, again, throwing rash accusations. I'm telling you, man, they accuse us of throwing rash accusations. These guys are. They didn't study the matter fairly, took time to pray and ponder. I did. I did. I answered back fairly with him. Being a person who has lived and traveled in USA, Africa, and Europe, I have come across many types of people. Living in South Carolina for seven years, for example, I came across many... Oh, yada, yada. See that ad hominem, ad hominem, using personal experience, personal experience like that could win? That sounds like an evolutionist using his, oh, I have this many PhDs in genetics and, you know, biology and zoology and stuff like that. How many did you got, Christian? Does that mean he wins? See? What in the world? Let me keep reading right here. I came across many KJV people, attended several of their meetings, and sat down to chat with them. I came away seeing KJV people as argumentative, judgmental, and arrogant. Guess what? I did too with you guys, okay? You guys were the same way too. You know what life is? You know what life is? No one is perfect. You're going to bump across people like that, okay? But see, this is again a totally different argument. He's not going back to the argument at hand with Greek and Hebrew. He's going ad hominem, ad hominem. Look at how my experience with these KJV people were like. Look at, you know, uh, my kind of experience, what I went through in life. Oh, you know, uh, see that? Ad hominem, ad hominem. Always attacking character, 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 character. Not the argument itself. Other non-KJV Christians, born again and not liberals, I found and saw the love of Christ. Well, boo hoo hoo hoo. So did I with KJV people. And so did I, did I see people who are non-KJV who are one of the most wicked people I ever met. We can pick and choose too, okay? These included people who were drug addicts, Muslim extremists, witch doctors, atheists, one lady, Doreen Irvin, who testimony includes the book from Witchcraft to Christ and many others. Guess what? We can do it too. Not just one woman, but we got many women. And we got many people who are drug addicts, atheists, and then Muslim extremists, etc., etc., who got saved in the Lord Jesus Christ and who believe the King James Bible. Yada, 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 man. Yada, yada. In fact, uh, there's this one Muslim lady. She has her track in the Bible Baptist bookstore. I think it's called Handmaiden for Christ or something like that. So it's a really good track. But, hey, this is just one example. I mean, we could throw out, okay? Like, that makes a difference. See, all ad hominem, ad hominem, character, 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 not dealing with the argument itself. They were reaching out to non-Christians as the Great Commission commands. One ministry called Turning Point in London, England is reaching dozens of Muslims for Christ. This is just one of non-KJV Christian ministries reaching out to Muslims. More Muslims have come to Christ in the past 30 years than previous 1400 years combined. Praise God. In short, my point is, I don't see that you are not a Christian, but you realize you're condemning non-KJV people. Uh, I'm condemning, what I'm condemning is people like you with the arrogant attitude. When people come to my church and they're into modern versions, I don't condemn them. I just show them from the Bible what's wrong with their modern Bibles right there and what's wrong with the KJV. If they don't believe that, hey, what can I do? That's between them and God. Well, who I'm condemning is you, man. I'm condemning people like you who use this intellect, Greek and Hebrew, pretending you're so smart that you belittle us. That don't fool me, man. 
In short, my point is I don't, uh, excuse me, I will leave a basic challenge for you. Really? You didn't answer my challenge. You already set out the challenge. I answered the challenge. You're not answering that challenge back. You know what? You're setting up a brand new challenge now. Yeah. See? Because you just lost. You pray for me and I will pray for you. <laughs> Definitely. And guess what? I do it every day uh, on this one. Whoever is wrong, the other one will see the right person's point. Thanks for your time. Guess what? I do that every day. Why do you think I came up with smarter and smarter and more thorough and more thorough teachings? Because I asked the Lord to guide me and lead me into all truth. I am fair to the other argument side. And did I not in this video? I was. I went very thoroughly. I may have done it in a condemning attitude, but you know why, right? Because they did it. They threw out the rash accusation like that. So what I did was, in return, not did a rash accusation, but I did an accusation that was thorough and objective in answering all points of their argument. Now, you notice he was giving all this argument about fruits right here. Fruits, fruits, that's the argument. That wasn't what I was driving at when I used the verse, by their fruits he shall know them. That wasn't my argument. When I used that verse, that argument was to show that video link about James White honor Satan as God. I put the video link right next to that, okay? The fruit of it is you're observing really blatant blasphemies and heresies when you endorse different words in different Bibles. That was the point of the fruit argument that I was using. See, he was being rash. He automatically assumed he understood without studying the arguments in the videos. I didn't do that. I didn't go, oh, he's just doing that, doing that. No. Before I condemned him as being a James White clone and that kind of demeanor, I studied every word in line, and guess what? They're all from those kind of people. Yeah. Okay? I was being fair. He's not condemning us for condemning them. That's hypocrisy. So you know what they want to do? They want to... They want to have the advantage of keep condemning you exactly. and you can't condemn them because that's like forbidden. It's like a race card or something they yeah. want to use, okay? Wicked bullies, that's the perfect wording for them, is that they are really wicked, and I mean wicked bullies. But see, they cloak it with professionalism. Yeah. But look, I, I, look, I went through higher education, studied all this argument, the evidence was all these videos you saw, and my credentials proved it too, okay? So I've been through all that. You guys don't fool me a bit. I know that professional cloak when I see it.